Good morning, happy Sabbath. Good job. <laughs> 10 points. One person. All right, let's try it. Let's try again. We uh, honestly, I know we're not all in here. We've got our people trickling in. Let's try again. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Woo, so much better. Okay, we would love it if you would join us in singing How Great Thou Art. You guys know that one? It's one of my favorites, all time favorites. If we could, there we go. All right, I want to hear you now. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power Thank you, praise team number one, for starting us off with such a wonderful song. And how great it is that you guys have chose Burleson today 
for your place of worship. We just love it. And to show appreciation to each other, let's take a few moments and say thank you, good morning, happy Sabbath, and greet each other. As we find our way back to our seats, I want to call your attention to the bulletin. Um, and for you visitors and guests that are here, I think once you look at the bulletin, you can tell that this is a very active church. All the different activities that we've got going through. One thing that you'll see, and it's probably fallen out early on, is a connect card. This connect card is our way of getting in connection with you for some of your needs, if you have a prayer request or you need Bible study, fill this out and the deacons will pick this up at the end of the service and the pastor will call for that. Uh, the other thing that I'd like for you guys to look at, and again, there's so many things in here, but it's the Ad Adventurer and the Pathfinder Investiture. And the investiture for the adventures is tonight at 6.30. Uh, those folks that would like to help support the adventures, please show up. And then we have the Pathfinders, which is next Friday at 6.30, May the 19th. So please come out and help support those kids as they go through this. Uh, you know, one of the things, being a Pathfinder and an adventurer, that was always fun to me is camping. And these kids, I know, has probably come to the end of it for this season, for this year. However, one thing that we do have in this church is in the fall, we have kind of an adult adventurer pathfinder group that gets together for the entire church family and meets uh, out by Cleburne Lake, I believe it is, State Park. So the folks that like camping, and camping to me kind of shows God's character. It shows what he has done for us in his creation. So be involved with that. Um, the other thing that, and again, this has a lot in there, is little Benjamin. His birthday is his first birthday. So I hope that you can come out and help celebrate uh, Benjamin's birthday. Also, uh, we have graduations. And we have a handout in there. And if you see these kids, if you go to their graduation, you know, give them an added support for their graduating and going into the next phase in their life. The other thing that I would like to talk about is on the very back of your bulletin, we have our financial summary. We have lower bathroom and the combined budget. I want to personally thank each and every one of you that have contributed to the bathroom remodel, and that's downstairs. We started this project not too long ago, and we have almost, almost reached our goal. We need $16,760, and we're at $14,528. I think we deserve a big hand for that. I thank you so much for being able to raise this money. The other thing that is near and dear to my heart is something that we've been doing ever since I've been here, which is about seven years. Uh, we do a 4th of July celebration. We do this for the community. And for those that don't know this or understand what goes on, we actually provide a place for the community of Burleson to sit 
and watch the fireworks. And I believe they occur, occur off to the uh, southwest. And when they're shot off, we have all the trees that are uh, south of this church that the people were able to set. And we provide a lot of activities for them. We have free water. We have food for purchase from our Pathfinder group to help them and in their endeavors. We also have a little train that the kids love. They ride in the little train and they go around the parking lot. We have a fishing pond for kids to do the fishing. There is a handout, and I would invite each one of us to prayerfully look at this and consider being able to help in the various categories. We have a drawing, Bible drawing team, a bass house, decorating team, which I know Joan would love to see a lot of people in that, face painting, hospitality, information, kitty fishing, kitty train, set up, tear down, and shuttle drivers. On the back it has all the different things uh, a description of these various categories. So please take a few moments and look at that and prayerfully consider volunteering. We need a lot of volunteers this year. Uh, next we have Mr. Steve Thompson that is going to ask for our tithe and offering. Good morning and happy Sabbath. If you look in your bulletins today, the offering is for ADRA and for women's ministries. Does anyone know what ADRA is, what ADRA stands for? ADRA, okay, so we have a few hands. Adventist, and correct me if I'm wrong, Adventist Disaster Relief Agency. And so this is a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that goes into the world, into all the world in underdeveloped areas that provides well-needed things such as wells, uh, such as building infrastructure so that people can have a way to live and live in a way that we would want to live, hopefully. And so this is a way that we are able to be the hands and feet of Jesus by being there for people who don't have the blessings that we have. Also, when there are disasters, ADRA is there. When there are hurricanes, landslides, earthquakes, uh, ADRA is there to minister to the people and provide for them the things that are needed when those things have been taken away. And, uh, and so what I'd like for you to do is to consider today that we have resources that are exceedingly abundantly more than what others have. And that we have uh, within our possibility a way to share with those people. In Psalm 50 verse 10, it says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Everything belongs to God, and He has shared that with us. And so we can in turn share with others. And so I'd like for you to consider that as we enter into the act of giving. In this part of the service where we can participate, let us give abundantly with what we have been blessed with. At this time, let us close our eyes and ask for God's blessing on, on this offering. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you've given us. We thank you for the immense blessings that you have packed down into our lives so that it is overflowing. And when we consider those around us who don't have, who are thirsty, who are hungry, who are unsheltered, and we look around and we see that we are worshiping in a beautiful church that has a roof and air conditioning and soft pews, when we go home and we eat a full meal, and we lay down in a soft bed and we have a beautiful home and we have a car to drive. We recognize how much you've blessed us and how much we need to share with others. And so we ask that as we give, you will bless what we give so that others will be blessed. We thank you as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are now going to have the children's story. And so the children can come forward, and then the deacons will pick up the offering. Thank you. 
Good morning. Anybody know what tomorrow is? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, yes. You know, I lost my mom a long time ago, but the church I belonged to back in Rhode Island, there was a dear, sweet lady that kind of like adopted her, us as her family, and we would call her Grandma and him Grandpa. And every time we went to that house, they used to have the most beautiful dinners, and she'd have the table all set up looking really pretty, all decorated, it took a lot of time doing all that kind of stuff. And every so often when she invited a little more people, she'd have to extend that table. So before you know it, she had about 22 people sitting down eating at her table. Well, there's one particular day I remember something really odd happened. Now they lived in a big farmhouse, okay, with two stories for living. The top was the attic and had a big, big, big basement. Okay, and it was nice and cool down there. So what she decided to do was, when she was making her dinner, she decided to have an apple pie for dessert. So she thought, well, hmm, I need to put this someplace out of the way so it will cool down. I know, I'll put it in the basement. So down the stairs she went, took the pie, put it down there, okay? Dinner went beautifully, everything was great. She's a great cook, I gotta tell you. Loved her meals. I saved some of her recipes and I use them all the time. But anyway, when the meal was over, she said, okay, who wants dessert? Everybody's hand went up. She said, I'll be right back. Went down the stairs. And came back, imagine there's a pie in this. Came back carrying the pie, but the problem was, this was a big plate, and she needed both hands holding onto it. So here she came up the stairs, up the stairs, very slowly making sure she didn't drop it, okay? The only thing wrong was she forgot at the top of the stairs, it was just a little bit higher than the rest of the steps. So her toe must have gotten caught on the top step. Guess what happened? She stumbled, then she said, oh, I'm gonna fall. She let go of the pie. In fact, the pie went up in the air, came back down, landed upside down on the floor. But she was safe because she grabbed a hold of a door frame. Now we all looked at that pie and went, oh no, there went dessert. And she looked at it and she went, wait a minute, she left. Went to the kitchen, came back in a minute, carrying a pie server. Knelt down beside the pie and said, everybody, bring your dessert plates over here. So she just kept slicing it up. She gave us the bottom crust and she gave us the filling. But there was the, the top crust laying on the floor. We didn't care, we got our pie. <laughs> And we had a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream on that pie. <laughs> so that dear sweet, nothing seemed to bother her. I couldn't imagine. I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I probably would have scraped it and just thrown the whole thing away. But thanks to her coolness, we had a beautiful dessert that day. That was a dear sweet lady. and She was so very nice to all of us. She was always there for us. She lived till she was almost 96 years old. And we were so glad to have her in our lives. Now tomorrow's Mother's Day, but you don't have to wait till one time a year to say thank you, Mom. You can do that at any time, and I know that would make Jesus very happy. Thank you for listening.
song. Good. I think we're good there. All right. Well, guys, come on down in here. Join me. All right. Our first baptism today will be Bruno and Anna. Uh, Bruno. <laughs> These guys were here with us at the meetings, and you guys remember the testimony from a couple of weeks ago? Yeah? All right. So we are excited for them, and they are ready. They are, they are excited, too. Um, I want to just say um, for a moment that if you are here, your family, your friends, please feel free to stand in support of Bruno and Anna. In addition to that, um, if you uh, have, if, if you've been commissioned to take video today or pictures, please feel free to come right up here or even friends, if you guys want to capture some video too, feel free to come on up here, uh, right onto the platform. We want to uh, make a special, this a special day and allow for those moments to be captured. So, all right. Um, I'm going to um, just give a moment. Uh, Bruno said he would be happy to just let Anna talk today. And so I'm going to let her just share a little bit with you guys about her experience and about what the Lord has done for her and in her life. Well, as I've said before, I thank God that we found this church. I'd been praying for a special church home, and we found y'all through the American Bible Prophecy Series, and I'm so grateful that we got that flyer and were led to this church. And so today, uh, publicly, before my new church family, I wish to recommit my life to Christ and to be rebaptized. And I'm just so grateful for the work that he's already done in me and look forward to what his plans are for me in the future. You know, um, Bruno was back here, and when she said what she said, he said, me too. I don't know if you guys heard that. but Me too. There it is. There it is. So, Bruno, I just wanted to let you know something. We didn't clear the air on this at the time of his testimony. You remember the testimony about them stopping smoking and they were driving down the road one day. They were going to plan to quit on Friday evening and instead they, they decided on a Tuesday driving down the road at some railroad tracks to toss those out and let the train take care of it, right? You remember that. He wants you to know that he does not litter. Um, <laughs> He doesn't make a practice of messing with Texas, all right? But um, that was a special moment and a very significant and symbolic thing that you guys did, wasn't it? Was. Yeah. So, um, what's that? We're very happy about it. Yeah. We, we owe it all to the, you know, the church for helping us and giving us the support that we needed. You know what was the most powerful testimony to me when they were talking about this? They said, um, this is the first time we've ever done this. We've tried before in the past, and, you know, but this is the only time we've ever done this for God. And this time's for Him, you know? And they said, that's what makes it different. Um, they have such a strong faith. I've talked to them about their stories and what God has brought them through. Uh, I just really admire the faith that you have in God, and I'm so glad you guys are taking this step today to officially become a part of the church body here. They, they have just uh, been overwhelmed by the love and support they found here, and um, they've shared that with me, and I'm passing that along to you all as well. All right? So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. You want to step over here? All right. All right, so if you want to come this way. All right, there you go. All right, grab onto my arm. Yeah, right here. Okay, right here. Bruno, it's because of your love for Jesus and your desire to follow him into the waters of baptism that it is now my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Anna, and it's because of your love for Jesus as well and your desire to recommit your life to him and begin walking in new life with him that it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to pause for a moment uh, and have prayer for these guys, okay? Um, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Bruno and for Anna for the decision that they have made today. And Father, we lift them up to you today asking that you would send your Holy Spirit that just like Jesus at his baptism, when he came up out of the water and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove and and uh, you spoke in that moment and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We are praying that the Holy Spirit would come into their lives in a new and powerful way from this day forward, that they might recognize that they have this privilege every day to ask your spirit to come back into their lives, to bring all of the beautiful blessings of Jesus Christ there. We, we lift them up to you. We ask that you would give them special gifts to be used in ministry here in the Burleson Church and in personal ways as they reach out to others. We ask that you would give them the fruit of the Spirit and develop in their lives the beautiful character of Christ as they move forward, um, committing their lives and their ways to him. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, do, what, do we have a motion to receive them into membership here? All right, a second. All in favor, please say welcome. welcome. All right, thank you. You guys thank can go there. Thanks. All right, Susan Lundell. All right, she is coming up here in just a moment. Very good. All right. All right, Susan has quite a testimony of her own, and uh, I'm going to share that with you. <laughs> she, um, she grew up um, in a Christian home, in an Adventist home, and uh, was blessed by that, and she was baptized when she was younger. But certain circumstances in her life, um, and in some ways, I, we've all had a person or two be legalistic to us, haven't we? Yeah, right? Some of that kind of drove her away from the church and gave her a picture of God that was not a loving God, not a forgiving God, not a, a good and gracious God that, like we serve. And uh, just recently, um, uh, a man came into her life and Boyd, and they, they got married. And, and so this, this beautiful thing happening. And at the same time, God's been doing something in her heart and just really stirring uh, something in her to show her who he really is, what he's really all about and how much he loves and cares for her. And so this is uh, something very special. She said she feels like this is uh, the first time, a baptism for the first time. I wanna ask that if there are friends or family present today, um, people who've gotten to know them some, if you would stand, we've got some up here already doing some video and pictures and stuff, but uh, please uh, feel free to stand in support of her today um, as she recommits her life to Jesus as well. Susan, it is because of your love for Jesus and your desire to have a do-over here and start for real this time that I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to have another prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we also come to you right now seeking your spirit and the blessing of your spirit, as Peter called it, the gift of the spirit. When, uh, when people are baptized, it is their privilege to receive the fullness 
of your spirit in their lives so that Jesus might dwell there, so that we might claim the promise of having the mind of Christ, so that we might claim that promise of having the law written on our hearts. It's something we love to do now. It's not something that someone's trying to force down our throat. We pray, Father, that that this would be Susan's experience moving forward and that you would just develop all these wonderful talents and spiritual gifts in her as she uh, thinks about ministering to other people in her life, whether at work or at home or or here in the church and and working together with the church. We pray that you would also uh, continue this process of growing her in you through your spirit, Father, whether we call it uh, the... Uh, the process of, of sanctification, which is the Holy Spirit's work, or the process of, of being made into the image of Christ. We pray that you would just continue to do this work in her life from this day forward and develop in her this beautiful character of Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. She's already a member here in Burleson, so we don't actually officially vote her, but um, uh, we are recognizing that this is a a, a beautiful and new experience for her. TJ, would you come on up here? Actually, his his full name is Timothy, um, but uh, he goes by TJ uh, uh, amongst uh, some circles, and so... um, Yeah, please, family, would you stand? And if you have camera videos, if you would uh, feel free. Come even right up here on the stage, Connie, if you'd like to. Feel free to do that. All right. Well, TJ actually came to the meetings, um, and and Connie came first. And so um, Connie brought TJ along with her. And so we we are are standing here today. as, as a blessing of a family member uh, being able to bring somebody else to the meetings that we just had. What a blessing that is. You know, TJ is a seeker of truth. Um, and as I've talked with him, I've just become more and more appreciative of, of his desire just to know what is truth. What does God's Word say? You know, trying to sort out the details of, of what the Word of God says. Um, I was visiting with him one day after the meetings ended, and he, he said, what do you think about the gap theory? I heard some folks talking about the gap theory about creation. What do you think about that? Uh, this, this young man is not your average young man. He has studied. He has, uh, he has uh, di- he's dived deep down into Scripture and, and uh, has really just been blessed uh, by the meetings that we had recently. You know, as I was talking with him, he was sharing with me about a, a pastor just, just recently that was uh, sharing a few things with him. Um, and, um, and, and he was performing some baptisms that day. And TJ was thinking, I wonder if I should do this. You know, I wonder if I should take this step. And at that time, he didn't make that decision. But during the meetings here, he did. And, uh, and he's just said, you know, it's, it's been such a blessing to me to kind of be able to sort out some of these things that the Bible teaches and to be able to know what the truth is, you know. Amen. So I, I've been blessed to know him, been blessed to uh, just be a part of this journey. And we're going to, without further ado, go ahead and get him baptized as well. All right. TJ, it's because of your love for Jesus and your desire just to go all the way for him and to follow him into baptism, that it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray again. Father in heaven, thank you so much for TJ and for the decision he has made for you. Father, we know this is just the symbol and that he has been living a new life in you already. But as he has uh, gone through the waters of baptism and experienced uh, cleansing here and the beautiful symbol of of Jesus dying on the cross and being raised again, and he is realizing that he's dead to sin and alive unto you in, in your son, Christ Jesus. We, uh, we, we lift him up to you today and ask for the filling of your Holy Spirit in his life. 
and that uh, in, in his life from this day forward, he would realize the privilege that is his every day to invite your spirit back into his life and continuing to live life with a, with a, a conscious awareness every moment of your presence in his life, leading and guiding and directing and giving him gifts to use in ministry and developing your character in his life. And Father, we, we will give you all the glory and the praise for the things that you have in store for TJ and his future. We thank you and we praise you and we thank you for Connie, uh, who was a big part of this decision this day. Uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, uh, we have a vote to take as well. Uh, do we have a motion to receive him into membership here at the Burleson? All right, second. All in favor, please say welcome. Welcome. All right. It's your church family, brother. Thank you. Um, on your way out today, please stop and greet these guys. They're going to be stationed at your door, at the door on the way out, stationed there to greet you guys. And we celebrate with cake here for baptisms because it's kind of like a birthday, isn't it? got a, a new spiritual birthday so uh, please please uh, welcome them warmly into the church as you leave today thank you amen don't you know there's a party going on in heaven right now and I don't want to be a downer, but I know that whenever there's a party going on in heaven, Satan is really unhappy, right? Oh, yeah. He's gathering the armies. And I read this really cool story. I will just, just for a second share it with you. It's about King Jehoshaphat. Say Jehoshaphat. Oh, that was really weak. Jehoshaphat. That's right. There he was. Armies really in the Bible you can read it, okay? And he was scared and the Lord came to him. He said, the battle is not yours. This is my battle. I'm going to tell you what to do. You armor up and you go to the battlefield. And trust me with this because I've got it. And you know what Jehoshaphat did? There's that word Jehoshaphat. You guys rock. He said, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to armor up. And you know who we're going to send in front of us? We're going to send praise to singers. And you know what they sang? They sang, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. That's our battle cry today. Whether you just got baptized and you're expecting Satan to be poking, okay? Or you have something else going on or your life is just, just beautiful, cherry on top, okay? We can all sing this song together. Give thanks to the Lord for his love and your service. So stand up and join us in singing. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever, for He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Carry on. 
garden of prayer song so when you get to the slide my father's going to do this that's your invitation if you would like to come forward and kneel bring your praises bring your special prayer requests and everything in between you are welcome to do so at that time Hallelujah, Lamb is overcome. 
Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you today to worship and honor you. And I first of all want to th say thanks for being you. And secondly, dear Father, I want to thank you so much for the spiritual birth that we've witnessed today. Ask that you be with these folks, with Bruno, Anna, Susan, and TJ, as they go about their spiritual walk, help each one of us to be encouragers, enablers, to help them when they have hard times, and to rejoice with them in knowing you. And dear Lord, today, as I feel the presence of your Holy Spirit, I ask that the Spirit touches each and every one of our hearts. Open our hearts to you to know that you are the truth and the way. Dear Lord, also today know that we're at the foot of the cross. We come humbly, yet boldly, knowing that the promise that you have for us is real. Each one of us has a petition, a praise that we want you to hear. You, the creator of the cosmos, of everything, we're so humbled to know that we can talk to you, that you listen to us, and you also answer our prayers. Dear Lord, I want to pray for our children, all the children as they go to school, to keep them safe. Those that are graduating as they look toward the next step in their life, be with them, continue to touch their lives. Dear Lord, I also want to pray for those that are sick, both here at our church and throughout. We ask that you listen to their request. You're the great physician, the great surgeon. Help them to not be discouraged. Help them to draw nearer to you, to put their arms around you. Dear Lord, we also want to pray for those that have financial concerns. Help them to find a solution. Help them to look to you. You know, your word, dear Lord, has every answer to every situation we encounter. And if it's not there, you are there. We pray, dear Lord, for those that have relationship issues. Be with them. Touch their hearts. Help them to seek you as counsel in their issues. Dear Lord, today as we think about problems, not only that we have individually, but we think about those throughout our world and our government and this land. We ask that you intervene, that you show us the direction, what you desire. And we know the direction is for your soon coming. And we ask that you come. 
We ask that you hear our voices, the hallelujah in each one of us. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for your house of worship. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. We also want to thank you for the mothers that are in our congregation. They have such a large role in each one of our lives. We love them and we know you love them as well. Be with each one of us, Lord, as we go through the sermon today. Help us to receive a blessing and to share this blessing. We pray these things according to your will and in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Okay, next we have whoa. <laughs> next we have a mother's tribute. It's something that our pastoral staff has created this past week. I think you're going to find it heartwarming, a little humorous, and very touching. Uh, guys in the sound booth, can you start the film? Just give me one second. Thank sure. you. Sorry. Uh huh. Hey. Hi. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Hey, Hi. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews uh, over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job, it's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, th is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh... I think that's a little intense. No, no not possible. That's crazy. Now this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that. With, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost a, a very, very sick, twisted joke. But when there's time to sleep, or? Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's, that's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is gonna pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono, <laughs> completely for free. No! What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Moms are the best. Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours. They're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. 
Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. So, Mom, I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. My mom is just awesome. She's awesome. Is there anybody out here that disagrees with anything that was said there? I didn't think so. You know, at this time, what I would like to do is all the non-mothers stand up to a mother and tell them thank you. Stand up, guys. Yeah, I know I personally want to thank mothers there. Uh, I don't know what we would do without them, right? I want to spotlight a couple of uh, mothers at this, and the uh, deacons are going to help. Thanks, Chris and, and the guys. Um, I'd like to know who is the most recent mother that we have here, someone that's had a child this month. Anybody here? Okay, last month, if you could stand. Okay, it's a mother for this year that became a mother this year. First time mother. First time mother last year. There's got to be somebody here. Okay, well, let me tell you a story before we do anything. Um, there is a recent mother that goes to this church, and her name is Amber Rogers Coleman. She gave birth to Levi on May the 4th. She's not here today. So anyway, she is our most recent mother that I'm aware of. Amber had to go to the hospital shortly after birth because of some complications. And I just ask that each one of us keep her in your prayers and Levi as well. Also, okay, here's one that might be able to get someone to stand up. And I'd like for you to stand if this fits. I'd like to know the mother that has the most kids. You have 12 kids or more? <laughs> Not too many standing for that. 10? 9? 8? 7? Okay, Joan, stand. And we'll have a deacon give you a rose. Okay, um, since we didn't have the most newest mother here today, we'll skip that, and I'm going to jump to grandmothers. Who's the most recent grandmother? Somebody that's had a grandchild in the last uh, year or so? Anybody here? Man, okay. Can we go... That's Deborah. Okay, here's one, and it falls in line with the other. The grandmother was with the most kids, not only kids, but grandchildren. Does anybody have more than 12? 10? Okay. We got 10 back over here. Okay, so we've taken care of the mothers and the grandmothers. Let's go to great-grandmother. Is there anybody in here that's a great-grandmother? Got two, three, four, five, six, Let's go ahead and pass out a rose to each one of those ladies, if you would, please.
There's two more back there. Okay, this next category is one I added today. And it's the mother or mothers that have been most recently baptized. Who are the mothers most recently baptized? Let's give them a round of applause. Now, the rest of us, I believe the deacons have done a good job. They're going to kind of uh, watch. Oh, we did? Oh, buddy. <laughs> okay. If your mother's here today, I would like for you to come up and get a rose. Be very careful when you get it, and get it just underneath the flower. There are thorns on there, and I, I assume we have paramedics in here, or doctors. But be very careful and come and give it to your mother. Okay, if there's any mother that we have not called on any of the categories, if you would stand or raise your hand, we'll make sure a deacon brings them to you. Okay. There's one back there. Barb. You know, I don't know about you, but every time you have these little hearts that bring you a rose, it just melts me inside. And I, I really want to appreciate the kids that have mothers here. So thanks a lot. Also, the deacons are going to carry these out to the foyer. And if there's anybody that wants to take a rose home to a mother that's not here, or for those of us that want to take a rose for mothers that we want to remember that are no longer with us, please take a rose with you. Thank you so much, and I don't know what we would do without mothers. Next one's Pastor Ryan. I just realized that in all of the fun and commotion of the day, I didn't get mic'd up with the special mic today, so I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. We saved the Mother's Day tribute until after the baptism and after praise so that we could spend a, a few moments honoring even those who were baptized today. So anyway, we wanted to make that a special time. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we just open the Word of God for a few minutes today. Father in heaven. What a day we've had today of celebrating 
uh, so many beautiful things, baptisms, people turning their lives over to you, uh, mothers that have played such a huge part in our lives. And today, Father, we just ask that as we spend a few moments in your word, that you would bless our time greatly and that you would uh, lead us to a deeper understanding of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mother's Day. Um, we are in the middle of a sermon series entitled Promises and Patterns. And I thought that today as we're beginning a part two of the sermon all the way uh, about the life and call of Abraham, that we would start with a couple of Mother's Day quotes. Um, this is actually an adaptation of a quote from Dr. Seuss, Thing One, Thing Two. To the world you are a mother, but to your family you are the world. Um, uh, I think in Dr. Seuss it says something like, to the world you um, may just be somebody, but to, to somebody you may be the world. So it's a little different in Dr. Seuss, but someone has adapted it for mothers. But isn't that true? Um, uh, and then Cardinal Mermelade said, a mother is she who can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. Um, isn't that true? The, you think about the many different roles, and you even heard it a little bit in the video. Someone who is a doctor and, uh, <laughs> what was it, a culinary expert? or I, I don't remember all those things, but all of those roles that mom plays in our lives. Um, what, a, what a special thing. You know, a, a, a mother is what makes home especially special, right? And, and dad as well. I don't want to downplay the importance and the role of fathers in the home as well. So key and so huge. But last week we talked about Abraham being called to leave home. Called to, to pick up and to leave and to go and to go out not knowing exactly where he's going, basically where he's going, but not exactly and uh, so we talked about him leaving this place, Ur of the Chaldees. This was the high-tech capital of the world, this area of Mesopotamia, really all of this area. They had two-story buildings, and they had a sewer system, and this was, was uh, years and, and years uh, ago, 4,000 4, years ago-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood, Ur of the Chaldees. Um, we, we noticed that also this was, this Mesopotamia region was the, the land where Shem's descendants settled. And, uh, and they continued to grow. And, and, and Shem now, he was the son of Noah that had the blessing of Noah and the blessing of God. Mesopotamia was the land of promise because it was the land where the people of promise were, Right? And so for God to call Abraham to go to Canaan, this was the, uh, these were the descendants of Ham um, that, that lived in Canaan. And some of these names you know, the descendants of Ham, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites. These became the enemies of Israel, right, eventually? And so um, th this is kind of a general map of where they kind of settled as, as they began to spread out a little bit. Um, but, but in essence, Canaan was the land of the curse. And Mesopotamia, the land of the two rivers, was the promised land, in essence, because that's where Shem's descendants dwelt. You, you, you have to wonder if there weren't a number of things that, 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 that Abraham was wrestling with when God initially gave him that call. And we noticed that as he left home, Abraham went halfway he went all the way about as far as you could go up here in Mesopotamian region, all the way down here from Ur, or all the way up to Haran, and still the land of his people, and he stayed there for a little while, at least until his dad died, until Terah, his father, passed away. I wonder, is it difficult for us to leave home? Yeah, I mean, especially, I think of it in this way. What if God called you to leave the first world experience and go to a third world experience, going far away from friends and relatives and people that you know? It would be a difficult experience, wouldn't it? It would be definitely, especially if he just said, I want you to go somewhere in, and you name a third world country, but didn't tell you where. I just want you to go. It would be difficult. And in essence, that's the call that God is giving to Abraham. And Abraham goes halfway and he pauses, 
Not necessarily that he's in direct rebellion against God or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But he, he does not go all the way initially, and God has to call him again. He calls him once in Genesis 11, and he calls him again in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3, after he had already traveled to Haran. And here is what God says, Genesis 12, verses 1 through 4. It says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives, and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. How do we know God calls him again? Because where is he leaving right now? He's leaving Haran, isn't he? He's not leaving Ur. He's leaving Haran at this point. God gives him a second call, which is essentially the same as the first call, and says, okay, it's time. Uh, and I have a lot of things that I want to, want to do for you, but it's time. It's time to go. The call of Abraham. Think about the call for just a moment. What did God not call Abraham to do? He does not call Abraham to simply make a big statement for him, to just say something really big and impressive. He calls him to action, doesn't he? He calls him to action, not just to make a big statement. Francis Chan and David Platt, the, the authors of the book Multiply, it's a discipleship curriculum. Uh, they have developed some videos that go along with it. And in one of those videos, I want to share a little bit with you what Francis Chan says here. And I want to see if you can resonate with this. He's talking about Christian conversion. And he says this. He says, we're quick to make these statements, these grand statements. I give you my life. How many times do you see this in Scripture? You say this, but you call me Lord, but, but why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I ask? It's, it's, it's like a, a big, big deal. You, you call me Lord, but, but why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I ask? He says, it, it's like, what kind of master am I? You know, kind of speaking in, in Jesus' uh, mindset there. I, I, he says, I've done it where I say, um, you know, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go running every day this year. And he says, you know, I'll say something like that. And then six months later or six days later, people say, well, did you really mean that? <laughs> and uh, he, says, he says, you know, I, I see that in Scripture. The, the fruit will show. If the tree's real, it's going to bear fruit. He says, we make those, those statements and we're not following them up and, and we're deceiving ourselves. James says we can be hearers of the word but not doers. And so we are deceiving ourselves because we're listening and, and, and listening and amen and amen and amen. But we're not doing what God asks us to. He says, and you know, Satan is the father of lies. He loves deception. He loves to deceive people. But I think in a lot of ways, he's very happy with what he sees in a lot of gatherings. He says, I don't even need to work there. They're deceiving themselves. They're going there hearing a message and not doing it. They're deceiving themselves. I think Satan's actually very pleased, he says, based on what I see in Scripture. I, I think there are times that he's very pleased that the Word of God is preached and not obeyed because that's his M.O. That's what he loves to do. He loves to deceive. He goes on and says, and so there's a bunch of people who think they're following God because they're going, wow, I, I heard a really tough message the other day. You know, I, I heard this, this message, and I got so convicted, and me and my friends, we even cried together. He says, you know, it's like we, we say, yes, we did it. He says, and I really think the enemy is going, this is great. This is great. When Jesus uh, was here on this earth, he says he was, he always said, repent. You know, let me see you turn. Repent said uh, John the Baptist, let me see you turn. He said, he said Peter said, repent. And, and he says, and we're all about feel bad and make a grand statement. 
God didn't call Abraham to make a grand statement, did he? He said, I want you to go. Go forth from your country. That was the call God gave to Abraham. He says, I will show you the land. I will show it to you. It includes a huge element of faith. God was calling him to step out in a way that that he had never done before. Go forth from your land. You see, God was showing Abraham that the land of Mesopotamia may have been the land of promise because there was a people with a promise there. But as they had turned their backs on God, God said, I got to take this remnant out right now or it's not going to last. And so now Abraham and his descendants become the people of promise, right? And, and God was showing him something special and something new there. But I want us to think just, just really quick about this passage, the promise that's here. See, see we, we, we learned uh, last, last week that this idea of, of Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, um, one commentator says it starts with a call, it continues with a promise, and ends with a blessing. What a beautiful thought. The, the flow there, the promise that's here is, I'm going to give you a new land. I have got a special inheritance for you, and I want you to receive it. I have good things in store for you but I need you to go. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. Here's the promise. And then there's this, all this beautiful blessing that follows. I am going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You will be a blessing. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. All people will be blessed because of you. Wow. That is quite a promise. And why are we looking at these promises today? I mean, some of us might say, oh, well, that was good for Abraham, but what about me? What about me? Well, you know something? The New Testament tells us that we can receive and inherit these promises just like Abraham was given the special blessing of inheriting the promise. Do you realize that? Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 says, and if you belong to Christ, who in here belongs to Christ? If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to promise or according to the promise, some versions say. Guess what? Spiritually, We, each and every one, are heirs of Abraham's promise. That is a promise to us. It's a promise to you. It's a promise to me. Each and every one of us that wants to take God up on his his call on our lives. Maybe a little different for each one of us, right? But if we're willing to take him up on it, he, he wants to give us all the blessings. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page 43. This is what, what uh, Ellen White says here. It is thus that God's purpose in calling his people from Abraham on the plains of Mesopotamia to us in this age is to reach its fulfillment. He says, I will bless you, and then all the, all the way down to the end of verse, and, and thou shalt be a blessing. The words of Christ through the gospel prophet, which are but re-echoed in the Sermon on the Mount, are for us in this last generation. Arise, shine, for, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah 60, verse 1. If upon your spirit the glory of, of the, the Lord is risen, if you have beheld his beauty, who is the chiefest among 10,000 and the one altogether lovely, if your souls ha- have become radiant in the presence of his glory, to you is this word from the master sent. Have you stood with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration down in the plain where there are souls enslaved by Satan? They are waiting for the word of faith and prayer to set them free. God says, I've got a call for all of you. I I want you to respond to the call, and I've got all kinds of blessings I want to give to you and to other people as a result. You're my called, you're my chosen, and I have more people that I'm calling to that that I have chosen because of my great sacrifice. What a blessing there is for us in the blessing pronounced upon Abraham. A man who was a writer by trade shared the following story. He said that he was a very young writer with a very uncertain income. 
and he went into a park one day to contemplate a, a very serious problem that he had. You see, he had been engaged for four years, but he was terrified to get married. There was no way of knowing how much money he would earn the next year or, or uh, in the next few months, and so he had delayed. But in addition to that, his fiance had a dream of living and riding, him living with her and riding in Paris and Rome and Vienna and London. But how could they get married and go so far away from home, not knowing uh, what their in income was going to look like, especially in a faraway place? This is the story of a squirrel. And I'll tell you more about it in just a second. You see, at that very moment, as he was thinking these thoughts, he looked up and he saw a squirrel jump from one high tree to another. It jumped. It leapt through the air. He said it appeared to be aiming for a limb so far out of its reach. And, and that leap looked like suicide. I looked up YouTube videos of squirrels leaping from tree to tree. I'm going to show you a 10-second little thing here. This is what it probably looked like. He misses. Oh, but there's a branch, right? <laughs> it looks like he misses at first. And this guy says um, he, he missed, but he landed safe and unconcerned on a branch several feet lower. Then he, he climbed uh, to his goal and all was well. An old man that was sitting there in the park on a bench said, you know, that's funny. He said, I've seen hundreds of them jump like that, especially when there are dogs around. <laughs> and they can't come down to the ground. I mean, that's not an option. He said, a lot of them miss, but I've never seen any hurt in trying. And then he kind of chuckled and he said, you know, I guess they've got to risk it if they don't want to spend their entire lives in one tree. The man thought, man, a squirrel, a squirrel takes a chance. Do I have less nerve than a squirrel? <laughs> and so he and his fiance were married two weeks later. They scraped enough money together for the journey and sailed across the Atlantic, jumping off into space and not sure what branch they were going to land on. He began to write twice as fast and twice as hard as ever before, and to their amazement, he began to kind of uh, have a respectable income. And, and uh, here's how he finishes the story himself. He says this, since then, whenever I have to choose between risking a new venture or holding back, those five little words run through my thoughts. Once there was a squirrel. And sometimes I hear the old man on the park bench saying, they've got to risk it if they don't want to spend the rest of their lives in one tree. Let me ask you, church, how is God calling you today? What is he speaking to your heart that you say, you know, I don't know that I can really do that. I want to tell you something. He's calling. There's no question. To, to say that he's not calling us to something like that today, whether it's giving something up or following him in, in leading in a new direction in ministry or something that's going on in your lives. You know how I know that he's calling each one of us? Because number one, none of us is perfect yet. And God wants to grow us, right? And so the question is, are we listening are we listening? Are we tuned in? What is he saying to you today? How was he speaking to you? I, and I, I just want to throw this out there. I know this story was more of just a, it was a story of faith, I guess you could say. Um, and, and the squirrel, I guess it's a story of faith. But spiritually, what is that leap he's asking you to take? Because you know what? We have an incredibly good God and he has all kinds of promises and all kinds of blessings that are not only for us, but for other people too that need to receive those blessings. And God says, I, I want to give them all to you, but do you trust me? Do you trust me? You have a connect card in your bulletin. And on there, on the backside, there are a couple of things under my next step today is 
Look at those for a moment. Just spend some time contemplating that. There's also a place where you can check a box for, for prayer or tell us your prayer needs. Um, there, there's some places where maybe, maybe the Lord was speaking to your heart today uh, during the baptism time. Maybe the Holy Spirit was heavy on your heart and you're saying, man, that's what I need to do. I need to walk into the waters of baptism just like they did. And whatever it is that, that you have on your heart today, please feel free to share that with us. We would love to be praying for you. Like I said, it's on the back side of the Connect card. And, and I invite you to, to listen to the words of the song that's going to be sung here. Um, we have my wife, Maria, and then Shelly, one of uh, our church members' daughters, who's here for Mother's Day. And, and uh, so... Mitch and Carol Campbell, thank you so much for being here and for singing for us today. The song is so appropriate to the message today, and I hope you guys listen to the words that you're blessed, and the deacons will come around with some baskets in a moment to pick up those cards.
steady faith that keeps believing lead me on amen as we close our altar team will be over here on the side if you need some prayer for something they'll be here to minister to you all right let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we close As you follow the call of God in your life, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.